In this video, we'll be taking a look at another new audio feature available in Unreal Engine version 5.3, the Audio Bus Rider. Now we've had audio buses inside Unreal Engine for a little while now, even prior to the release of 5.3. So this feature is specifically the ability to write audio data to that audio bus from within a meta sound. But before we start diving into how to set this up, I do want to take a moment to explain what an audio bus is for those of you who might not be familiar. In the simplest of terms, an audio bus allows us to take an audio signal and either send it out to multiple destinations or allow us to take multiple audio signals and bring them all into one location simultaneously. This separation and combination is facilitated by what we call the audio bus. So why is this important? While there are multiple uses for audio buses, one of the most common is signal processing in a non-destructive way. So let's actually jump over to Pro Tools and I'll show you an example of how this works inside of a DAW. As you can see, I have one audio track that has this slow acoustic piece on it. And if I wanted to apply effects to this track, I could certainly come in here and uh, let's say, you know, we add a delay on it. And let's just, for the sake of demonstration, We'll also put like a wah effect on it. And so with these effects applied to the track, if I hit play again, and so you can hear that the track now has those effects applied to it. And if this works for what you're trying to do, then that's totally fine. There's no hard rule that says that you can't apply effects directly to this track. But the downside is we only have the process track. We're not able to blend in the original source with it. We completely lose that if we were to render this down. So how do we set this up if we want to be able to blend the effects but maintain the original? And that's where audio buses are gonna come in. Now, technically, I could duplicate this track out and just remove the effects from the original. And so now we have, this would be our clean, and then this would be our processed. And so you can hear that we have a process track and a clean, and we can use our volume fader on the process track to kind of blend it together. Or, and I'm gonna delete this one just so that we can keep our effects here. Or I could create an aux track. I'll move these plugins to the aux track. And now we're gonna use our audio bus and we're just gonna send the original signal out to that bus. And right about now you might be thinking, well, if duplicating the track and putting effects on the duplicate track works, then why bother with buses at all? And in this particular situation where you're dealing with just one single audio file, I can see why you might be thinking that. But what if we scaled this up? Let's say I have a project with multiple audio files that all need to be run through the same effects chain. Now I could technically come in here and duplicate each of these tracks and then apply the effects to each of those duplicates. But one, this is gonna take way longer than it needs to. And two, each of these effects, uh, every time they're put into an effects rack requires system resources. 
And so using buses, I can send all of these tracks to one aux track that's being affected, where I only have two effect plugins here. Whereas if I were to duplicate all these out and put effects on each of the duplicates, I'm, I went from two plugins to 10 plugins. So not only is this gonna utilize more system resources that could be allocated elsewhere and take up more time, using the bus also would allow us to introduce new audio tracks and just send them all to the same bus and get the same processing right from the get-go without having to do the whole duplicate process. And so now that we have an understanding of what audio buses are, let's jump over to Unreal and see what this looks like in the engine. So inside Unreal Engine, I've got a Metasound set up with a Wave player, and this just has the exact same acoustic guitar track that we were looking at in Pro Tools. And if I wanted to apply effects to this, um, I could certainly pull off of our wave player here. And uh, let's say we're gonna go into a stereo delay. And from here, uh, maybe we wanna go into a bit crusher. So I'll go ahead and set this up real quick. And we can run this to our outputs. And if we hit play again, we can hear that we now have an, a processed signal. But this, setting it up this way, is the equivalent of putting the effects directly on the audio track, like we saw in Pro Tools. Now, I could come in here and add a mixer. Grab a stereo mixer here real quick. And I can run a clean audio signal from our wave player into that mixer, into the first section of it and I can run our process signal into the second portion of it and run that mixer out to our outputs. And so doing it this way, we will get the process signal and the clean signal mixed together. And if I wanted to, I could adjust the gain levels on each of these to blend it to taste with how much effect I want to be blended in with the original audio source. But doing it this way would then be the equivalent of duplicating the track in like we did in Pro Tools again, and then just applying effects to that duplicate. And again, if you're working with just one single audio file that you want to process, this works. But then we're gonna run into the same issue that we had where what happens if we want to scale this up and process multiple meta sounds through the same effects chain. Every time we process a signal through these effects, it's going to take resources. And so what we can do is, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these and just reconnect them back to our left and right. And as an additional audio source, I've also got our first person weapon sound here, which typically inside your browser, uh, you would just have the, um, just the single wave asset, but I've gone ahead and created a meta sound for it. And I've also swapped this out inside the weapon component to use the meta sound instead of that single audio asset. And so what we're gonna do is if we pull off of here and we search for audio bus, you're gonna see that we now have these audio bus riders. And you'll notice that we have a few different ones. We've got audio bus rider one, two, 
4, 6, and 8. And this actually corresponds to our output format of mono, stereo, quad, 5.1, and 7.1. So 1 would be a single channel, which is your mono, 2 is stereo, and, and so on and so forth. So since we're working with a stereo file, uh, I'm going to go ahead and select the audio bus writer 2, and we'll connect both channels. And I'll do the same thing inside of our first person weapon. So we'll move these out of the way and connect our left and right channels from our first person weapon wave player to the audio bus. Now we've, we're sending signal to an audio bus, but we haven't quite defined what audio bus we're doing. And that is something that you can actually create so we'll go back in here, and if we right click, you can search for audio bus, and it'll pop up, but if you're navigating the menus, it's going to be audio, mix, audio bus. And just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm simply going to call this audio underscore bus. And we'll go ahead and open this up, and inside the audio bus that we just created, we have a single drop down that has those same audio formats that we were just discussing inside the meta sound. And so since we're again dealing with stereo files, I'm going to select stereo from here. If you're working with audio buses and whether it's stereo or a surround sound setup, but you're noticing that you're only getting audio coming out of your left speaker, come in here and check this because chances are it's set to mono. So with stereo selected from our drop down, I'm going to go ahead and save this and I can close it. And then from our drop down, we can now select the audio bus that we just created. And so now we have signal going out to our speakers. That's our clean tone. And we've got audio signal going into the audio bus. Now we just need to set up a destination for it. And so I'm going to go ahead and create another meta sound. And I'm just going to call this MS underscore receiver. Uh, you can name these whatever you want. I'm just naming them for tutorial's sake. And we don't need our on finished, but we do need to make this a stereo. And I don't need to worry about connecting our on play to anything. So I'm going to go ahead and right click in here and search for audio bus again. And this time, instead of getting our audio bus writer to, we're going to get our audio bus reader to. So we'll select audio bus from our drop down again. And so now the way that this is set up, we're sending audio signal to the audio bus. And we're bringing that same signal into here. And so now this is where I'm going to go ahead and apply that stereo delay. And we'll connect both channels again. And I'll run this out to a bit crusher again. And then from our bit crushers will run it to our audio output and we can go ahead and save all of those and if we were to jump into our level blueprint i'm just going to do a begin play and we're going to add an audio component and i'm going to make this our music Compile that, save it, and currently, if we were to hit play on this, we hear the music, and we can hear our first person weapon sound, but we only hear the clean sound. We don't hear that processed sound. And that's because our music is being activated 
and so is our weapon sound each time we fire, but we haven't activated this uh, ms underscore receiver uh, meta sound that we've we've created. So I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this audio component, and then for the source of the second audio component, I'm going to select our receiver. And so now, as soon as the level begins, we're activating our music. We're also activating this receiver that we've created with the bus going to the signal processing. We'll go ahead and save this again and move it back out of the way. And now this time when I hit play, you can hear that we now have both the clean and the process signal from both our music and our weapon sound all running through this same signal processing. And so while we are adding an additional meta sound, depending on how much processing you're doing, we're actually gonna be reducing our system resources used to process those sounds. And so we can actually get a little creative now with how we're using our audio buses. So I've got this little example set up and I've got two planes here. Uh, they're similar, but visually very different. Uh, I've got some realistic looking grass and trees on this side. And then over here I have the low resolution area. And I'm gonna be using these different box triggers to switch between which audio bus I'm actually utilizing. So if I hit play, I've got this piano track on here. And when we're in the more realistic looking area, uh, we hear it just the normal clean tone. But if I were to walk over here to this area, you can hear that we now have a, and I used a bit crusher because it kind of fits thematically with the terrible art assets I have set up here. And so while it seems like I may be just playing two different wave assets that are synchronized, but one is processed, actually all I'm doing is switching buses. And just like we saw in the previous setup example, this works with our first person weapon as well. So we have the normal firing sound, but if I move over here, we now have a processed gun sound. Now, as far as how I'm doing this, um, this way, I'm not actually sending our original source to its own output. I've got an audio bus send, and in my receiver, I've got all of my audio coming in to a reader that I'm actually passing out to another bus writer. And I'm using those box triggers to select between two arrays. So if you see down here in the bottom left, I've got a bus for clean and a bus for bit crushed. And so now when the MetaSound receiver gets activated, both of these buses are available and I'm just using the box triggers inside my level blueprint to select which one of these bus readers is actually getting the signal. So when we're in the area with the high quality trees, we're going to be passing it through this bus clean. And as soon as we step into the other area, it's going to switch to this bit crushed bus and we're only processing through the processed signal chain with the effects on it. So that is gonna wrap things up for this video. If you found this helpful, please consider hitting that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. And if you would like to join the Sound Effects Guide Discord server, you'll find a link in the description below.
Until next time.